Hello, everyone. Can you uh, hear me? Hopefully you can. All right. Um, <clears throat> so hello and welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Peter Farkas, and I'm the co-founder of CEO of uh, FerretDB, and I will be the um, moderator of uh, today's webinar. This is actually the very first uh, webinar uh, of the document database community, and we are very, very excited about the, about the high number of, uh, of registrations. Um, to today's webinar. So a couple of words about the document da database uh, community itself. Um, we found, founded the document database community because we found that, um, that uh, knowledge uh, and standards uh, around document databases are a lot more fragmented uh, when we compare it to uh, relational databases. And we are here to, to change that. We are here to change that by organizing a community of experts and users uh, across different technologies and companies in the document database uh, space. And our hope is that this community will uh, disperse information, create connections in the industry and drive uh, innovation uh, in, in this space as a result. So our first speaker, um, in this webinar series is Adamo uh, Tonetti. And Adamo works as a MongoDB subject matter expert in AMAC, AMAC software. Adamo will uh, deliver a talk on switching from relational uh, to document models, uh, which is uh, an introduction to document databases. Uh, the talk will take approximately 40 minutes and all questions posted through YouTube and Zoom will be answered by Adamo uh, after his, uh, his talk. Um, with that, uh, Adamo, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you everybody for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, like Peter already mentioned, uh, the goal here is to give some background and ideas how to you know, like migrate from a relational database to uh, a document model. Um, just a second here. Okay, a little bit about me, right? So uh, my name is Adam and uh, I've been working with no relational databases, mostly uh, document oriented database for, for almost uh, one decade, one decade already, right? Um, I worked as a support engineer, a technical support engineer for Percona, MongoDB and PinkUp. PinkUp is a new SQL but it has some uh, ideas very similar to MySQLs and distributed data and so on and so forth. Currently, I'm working um, as MongoDB subject manager of expertise for AMAC, which is uh, an Irish company. And uh, I'm based, on, uh, based in Brazil. Right? Um, my idea in this uh, webinar, just talking about myself, is to share what I've learned for those customers and us being a support, what they what they are the struggles and uh, what they, they are doing uh, with their, their no, uh, no relational uh, database. So let's go to, to the agenda then. So um, this is our agenda today. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we are going to do very much a review of uh, relational databases we are going to compare this. This this webinar is going to be more focused on comparing uh, the idea of normalization uh, between a relational database and uh, a document oriented database. That's one of the most common problems I've seen, and uh, it seems to be the scariest part of migrating from a relational database uh, to uh, a document oriented database. Right. Um, while talking about relational database, I'm gonna bring some information about like the, the SQL language. Um, I'm gonna also comment about you know, like storage engines, but we're not gonna go that deep in both relational and uh, document oriented databases. Um, and then we're gonna discuss a little bit about joins. That's a, you know, like a, one of the things that you very much likely gonna miss are never gonna are not gonna miss uh, while migrating to document oriented databases, and then later on uh, when talking about document databases, 
uh, will compare uh, the model. Like I said, normalization, not that normalized or with zero normalization as well, right? We're gonna discuss the document model and for documents database, I'm gonna go a little bit deep and explain uh, different ways that you can organize, so you can you can model your, your document uh, database. And then later uh, we'll discuss about the query language. You're gonna see that's uh, like uh, Peter mentioned, uh, the information is quite fragmented, uh, but at the same time, depending on the document oriented database, you're gonna have a different query language. I'm gonna just bring some information, I'm gonna uh, show some, but there's uh, no way that I can you know, like summarize all the different query languages for all the document oriented databases. Right? Um, and once this is clear, uh, my, my goal at the end of this presentation is to make it clear uh, the main difference between those databases. We are gonna discuss about migrating from uh, a relational database to a document database. It seems uh, to be straightforward. Um, in most of the case it is, but there are some good practices and common mistakes uh, that I've seen that I wanna you know, like show um, to you. And uh, you know, like if some question remains, feel, feel free to you know, like ask me at the end. Uh, when saying document database, just to make clear, I'm gonna refer to MongoDB, FerrotDB, um, CosmosDB, DocumentDB, and all the other uh, common um, document database. There are a lot of more different databases. I'm gonna mention HarangoDB as well, uh, but there's uh, no way that I can you, you like mention all of those. Uh, if I, if I, I, I haven't mentioned the database that I'm interested, um, just let me know and I'll be happy to answer the questions if, uh, if I know and if I not, I'm gonna, I'll be willing to get the answer uh, by this, uh, at the end of the webinar. Um, a little bit about, uh, now I'm gonna talk about the, the relational database. It's gonna be, like I said, a review. If you never work it with a relational database, that's, give you, that's gonna give you an idea what is a relational database. Uh, since then, the relational databases are there, out there. Right? And um, also, um, I'm going to mention like the common uh, relational database, the most common relational database that are, we see uh, running nowadays. Um, going a little bit back in history, in the 70s, the first relational database paper was written uh, by Edgar Frank Codd. Um, this I mentioned just like that's that's important uh, date for relational database. And then nine years later, Oracle released their first uh, commercial relational database. Uh, and then it followed by DB2, Informix, and uh, all the other flavors that we see being uh, the most popular um, relational database nowadays, Oracle, Postgres, MySQL, and Microsoft SQL Server, along more than 100 other products, small products, uh, or even big products that's not that uh, common seen in the rank of the, the, the most common relational database. And it's important to mention, and we are gonna compare that later, that at the time of the conception of a relational database, uh, databases were designed to use as less resource as possible for machines. Because at, the, at that time, in the 70s, uh, beginning of 80s, uh, storage price was quite, quite high. And at the same time, hardware price was extremely high. Right? At that point as well, databases were designed to run in a single host and uh, you know, like trying to get as much uh, you know, like performance as possible for, for a single host. Um, and although database has more than, uh, I would say almost 40, uh, 40 years right now, if you consider the first paper, right? Uh, more than 40 years, it's too highly used today. And uh, there are several systems that are running that and they are running just fine. And uh, when discussing about document data related uh, oriented database, we are gonna mention the, the, the kind of workload that fits better for uh, document database. And uh, speaking of normalization, uh, that's uh, if you, you know, like attend university and uh, if you created one database at least once or if you're a programmer you 
very much needed to create your database before um, starting developing, right? And um, the whole process of normalization involves um, a lot of time, usually. I like to split the tables in a way that you're not, have, you're not gonna have uh, duplicated data, you're gonna save as much space as possible to keep the data consistent. Um, and then um, and then later you're going to start developing uh, your application right um, relational database uh, use uh, SQL language we are going to discuss later as well and uh, there are a lot of pros uh, i mentioned just two for each and some cons of having the data extremely normalized right when i say normalization i'm just saying i'm, just, I'm telling about the third form of normalization right? uh, and sometimes the second one it depends on um, how you're, uh, you're comparing both uh, kind of databases. The pros are, you know, like you're gonna avoid data duplication, save disk space. Um, you're gonna also save, um, you can save some, you can get some performance as well. Some small tables will be in cache, and then you can get advantages of that, but you're not gonna go that deep. Um, the cons is you, ha you have a high dependency among the tables if for some reason, you lose one of the key tables and you don't have backups, it's very unlikely that you're going to get uh, the information back. And some cons as well is because you have a high dependence among tables. If let's say, I'm going to show these slides uh, I'm in the next slide, a uh, um, normalized system, right? It's a very simple normalized system. But if you change your product name over time, you're not going to have the historical of this data. You're going to need to create a table with the historical data, because you know, like uh, you're going to always have the latest version of the role for performing joins and, and so on and so forth. And one, another con, I'm not going to say it's completely a con, but um, the cons is you have a strict schema. Let's say if you want to add another field, uh, if you want to change uh, the primary key, uh, and um, you're going to create an index, you, you're going to have to perform that in a very strict way. Right? And uh, not only for uh, in like object creation, but you're gonna also need to specify the data type of, um, of the fields you are inserting in the table. Uh, this is a normalized, very absolutely simple uh, orders uh, system, right? This system is um, basically a customer and this customer has a full name, birthday, and uh, the created date uh, created at this time. Uh, I also create a user. Uh, not sure uh, if you can see my pointer here, um, but I also create the user here. I have a user, and that this user is basically if my customer was created by an integration, I'm gonna have uh, this user. You know, like I have, I'm gonna have the application that I created this user for me instead of the user uh, self um, seeking up for for the application. And then we have the orders table and this order is has the minimum fields as they can it's the order id my customer id and the created at and then we have the order details order details will have the id which is a foreign key for my orders i didn't put here but my primary key is the the id plus the sequence number and then i have a product and this product is um, the product id for another table and this product has a name and uh, I have I, I, I'm buying an amount of product which, which could be one in a hundred and then I have the final price. So for a relational database for a standard relation database, uh, this is very much how your system uh, your your tables will be looking like nowadays. And then um, in order to create this table and in order to handle the data, uh, to write data, to manipulate data, sorry, uh, this is the, the, the correct word. You're going to need to memorize a lot of comments. Not saying that document database doesn't need any memorizing for, uh, you don't need to memorize any documents, but uh, you have different kinds of comments uh, for uh, relational databases. And it's important to know that you have the data manipulation um, comments, which is the insert, delete, update, select, join and any other comment that I use your day by day to manipulate being writing you know, like deleting or updating uh, updating rows and then you have the data definition which is create table alter table create index 
and you know, like create user. Uh, there is not there is another type of uh, uh, commons that you can run against um, against the relational database. You have some analytics queries, right? But I'm not bringing that here because it's, it depends on, on, on the relational database that you're using. Some uh, relational databases have their own um, SQL functions, right? So if you have, if you're using Oracle, or if you're using, let's say, Microsoft SQL Server, they will have their own SQL functions for, let's say, creating your backup, you know, like adding, uh, you know, like a, an external uh, data source and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, so um, we have a standard SQL that most of say like all the relational database use. And uh, we have some uh, sort of commons that is specific for, for some, some uh, tables, sorry, for some uh, relational database. And uh, it's important to mention because if you are trying to migrate from one relational database to another relational database, it may not work because it's, you may be using some specific comments. And for data definition language, some DDL may block other operations. Um, nowadays, the storage engines and the database are a bit smarter, right? So we are trying to avoid as much as possible. When I say we, as developers, you know, like a, the companies trying to avoid as much as possible to block other operations, but that's the reality. For some operation that's you need to rewrite a table, for instance, or if you need, you know, create an index, you may get a, you know, like your, your operation block at least for that table or at least for um, that specific page in memory because it's gonna get blocked for a while, right? Um, yeah, let's talk about uh, the SQL language. And um, to take advantage of um, this whole normalization, you need to, tell the database uh, what you need, right? Um, comparing, like considering the, the normalized data, data that I showed, sorry, normalized tables that I showed before, if I need to find all the orders that was made by a customer called Joe, uh, there's no way to do that without using an inner join, right? So uh, that's that's a simple comment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select in star, meaning all the fields for the orders a table, uh, inner join, like I wanna, I wanna join those, uh, those tables with the customers where my customer ID is, well, is equals my um, order post, uh, dot customer, right? And then I'm, I'm adding a predicate here saying, hey, but I just wanna where my uh, customer name is equal to Joe. And while I'm, I'm writing that, not a while, but when I request uh, my database, when I run this query, my database will try, my relational database will try to get the fastest path to find, um, you know, like the orders that contains this uh, um, customers that is named Joe. So for that, we have uh, the query optimizer uh, and then the query optimizer will try to get, you know, like the information using uh, indexes, uh, statistics or uh, any other information that can be used. And once this, this uh, select, this query is completed, uh, my relational database will return that to my, to my client where the client could be me or could be an application in a row format uh, response. So you're gonna have several rows with different fields, and then you're gonna parse that and show that in, in your application, right? And that's very much, uh, I wanna say for, um, the relational database. We're gonna now uh, start with the document database. And I wanna show how this would look like in a relational database. Let me go there. So document database, um, an overview. Uh, and I'm starting from scratch, like I did with the, the relational database. So no relational database or document oriented database. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, those names here quite often. They, uh, I'm gonna use sometimes no relational, no SQL or document oriented database, but it's important to mention that not all no SQLs are document oriented databases, right? We can have no SQLs as key values, right? We can have column star, we can have different kinds of no SQL. But when I say no SQL here or 
When I say no relational, I'm referring to document uh, databases. It was developed in the late 2000s. There's some you know, like different information who created the first one. That's why I don't want to give credit to uh, anybody here. So we see some people developing them in the late 90s. But it started to be a, it started to be a trend in the late uh, 2000. And um, those databases were, were written and designed for the new reality of systems, right? Uh, now the cost of hardware decreased significantly comparing to uh, 30 years ago. Application now, now needs to scale, um, scale out. Right? We have a lot of uh, web applications that are serving thousands, millions of people, right? and a single instance will very unlikely be able to handle all this data. It focuses on scaling, it's not keeping, um, it's not keeping in like the same idea of um, normalization because sometimes if you have huge amount of data, if you need to you know, like run uh, a join or an aggregation, it may take a while. So the, the, the query response is the priority right now for most of uh, the relational, uh, sorry, the document oriented databases. And document oriented database also offer a flexible schema. When I say flexible schema, doesn't mean schema less, right? So if you try to put all the information in a, in a, in a single collection, it's not gonna work or it's gonna work very poorly. So when I say flexible schemas is, you, you, you can um, enforce some kind of schema. If you don't wanna, you need to at least you know, like a, uh, split your data based on subjects, right? So if you have a customer, it's better to have a collection call, a collection or a table. You're gonna use collection here as the same as table because I'm referring to, to MongoDB mainly. Uh, you, can, you, can have, you need to have different uh, collections for a different uh, purpose, right? So um, what is the advantage of this flexible scheme and why we are gonna see that, that word uh, very often? Um, the flexible scheme allows uh, developers and uh, softwares you know, like to, uh, to be created fast, to speed up the, 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 fully, the full development process because you don't need to really create your, all your tables. You don't need to first to specify uh, the whole system, the thousand, not thousand, but hundreds of tables. You can simply you know, like start creating your objects and then like you, you can work in, you can be working on that and, and optimizing your objects, right? And with the era of um, web applications and also um, mobile applications, sometimes you need to develop and deploy a software in a couple of months. Uh, document databases, in a summary, uh, save their their document uh, their their object the, the, their document sorry uh, as JSON, right? And when I say JSON, I'm saying uh, it will answer you as a JSON, but not necessarily it's gonna, you're gonna see a JSON saved on disk, right? Some databases can, can change that. FerrickDB will change that for um, the database that's behind the scenes. Uh, the same for, for Amazon DocumentDB, uh, MongoDB will change that. But uh, if like uh, it, it seems for you or, and for the application, um, it's basically JSONs going back and forth over the wire. Right, um, and uh, that's a good thing because mostly of the recent languages can parse JSON really, really easy. Right, so instead of going getting rows and parsing out the, the columns in a row and then creating your JSON response, right, uh, you have that very easily uh, with a, a document oriented database. And uh, yeah, let's suppose we are developing an e-commerce. And I just want to show how the flexible schema uh, will be helpful uh, for for e-commerce, for, for instance, uh, where the products have different properties. Right? If creating you know, like a normal relational database, you may need to have hundreds of fields, and most of the fields may be new uh, because you don't have the the property for this specific field. So um, here I'm, I'm just like a, pretending that I have two products. The first one is a laptop, which is electronic. 
it has a brand and the laptop has memory. Uh, it has color, uh, in that case, silver. And, but at the same time, the same collection, the same table, I'm also, I also have t-shirts and this, this is just like a, it's just a t-shirt. It doesn't have memory, right? <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, it has a size. And if you see here um, in this example, uh, those are totally valid documents in my database. The first one, I'm, I'm not creating the size, I'm not saving new as value of the size, but I'm saving the memory. And the second one uh, has the size, but doesn't have the memory. So the advantage of the flexible schema is that, that you can omit some fields. Uh, you can have fields, they, they are polymorphic as well. Right? So you can, you can have different values. Like I, I could have my memory as an integer and also I can have my memory as, as a string. We wanna discuss uh, in a couple of slides uh, that as well, but that's the whole, the whole idea of having a flexible schema and that's how it can help you developing fast. When receiving the result from your API, you're gonna validate if the field size is there or you're gonna map the keys and get the values of the keys. You don't even need to even know the, the keys. You just need to parse the, the result, get the key names, and then the key values. It's way easier than going and, and checking if the field exists or not. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I said. Uh, I was ahead of my slide. Uh, they can, they can uh, have different properties. Right? And um, if we don't want that, uh, several database, DocManiB, Procon Server, can offer uh, a, a, feature, a feature called schema validation, where you can ensure that some fields must be present in your, in, in your document. Let's say you wanna make sure that the name is always in your document. You can create kind of a schema, it's called schema validation, but it's a JSON with the whole validation that will say, uh, my field name must be present and this must be a string, right? So it's flexible, but it's not schemaless. And uh, that's important as well. If you are a bank or if you are working with financial, financial data, uh, you may better, uh, make your schema a little bit more restrict, right? And um, make sure that all the data that you are saving and retrieving follows uh, the pattern that you uh, previously specified. And continue talking about the document model and the flexible schema. I wanna, I wanna just demonstrate how it would like if I want to create my, my customer entry, my customer table as, as a document, as a document in the document database. I'm using the same field names. Remember, uh, I had the ID, full name, birthday, created that. But my created by in my previous example was um, another table. But in this example, this is a specific example, I'm saving the whole value of my user as an embedded document. And that's perfectly fine for a document oriented database. This is one example of document model. Right? It doesn't mean that uh, that's the only way and the correct way. But if you look at that, and if you query for anybody with the full name, Joe, you're gonna get all the information without without running a join, right? without running, uh, merging two different tables. But I'm gonna say, well, you're kind of like repeating uh, your information, but that's completely fine as well for a document oriented database. So you're gonna see that sometimes we are gonna duplicate the data to gain some performance, right? So instead of doing an inner join, um, although it's a very simple inner join, um, this one will be slightly faster. If you are comparing 1 million rows, right? Performing an linear join, and this one, you can get the one, uh, the 1 million rows pretty much faster because there's no processing time. You are just retrieving the full, uh, the full document. 
and continuing um, speaking about the document model. The document schema, your document model would depend um, highly on your data access pattern. If for instance, you are always going to require, if your application always require knowing who, the, uh, who created the user, it's gonna be better to save the user uh, along with uh, the customer, right? And um, yeah, this is an example of embedded document. It's a copy of um, the user collection, right? It's a copy of what you would have in the user collection. But let's make it a little bit more complicated. Um, and before making it a little bit more complicated, I need to mention uh, the types of values that you can have in your document model. So in a summary, um, for document-oriented database, you can have strings, numbers, booleans, arrays, or other objects as a value for a field. And those fields are polymorphic, like I mentioned before, meaning you don't need to, it doesn't need to be the same uh, value type for, for the same field in the same collection. You can have one um, specific entry where the value of a field is an array and for the other document, it can be a string. Of course, it's gonna be hard for you to parse, but nothing, um, but that nothing blocks you to do that, right? And uh, the decision how to um, model the schema really, really depends on uh, your query pattern for the specific uh, table order i'll be i'll be showing how uh, how it will look like in a in a document uh, database and um, although we try to avoid as much as possible um, reference to tables which is basically a join we for 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 some documents will be better to have a reference than repeating the data over and over again because you can heat some um, some limitations such, such as like the document size limitation. I'll, I'll be talking about it as well. So how does how orders will look like in a document debate? How 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 are the orders? Um, I would say my orders table right uh, will look like in, in a document oriented database. Um, well, that's that's how I would design that. Instead of having um, one, two, three, four, five tables, we are gonna have one single uh, document with all the information I need. And this will contain the order ID, my customer name, so I don't need to join to go to the customer uh, table to find the name. But if I need additional information, I have the customer ID as well. I'll have my order details, which I'm calling details here. And if you see, it's an array here. And uh, this, this array contains all the products. And I have the sequence I don't really need, but I wanted to keep as similar as possible to my uh, initial database. And then I have my product ID, my product name. At the time that I'm, I'm, I'm finishing my order, if I change my name for, if I change the name for product 21, um, it doesn't really matter for this order. When I sold this t-shirt, it was called t-shirt and my unit price at that time was $10, right? And I bought two and the total was $20. The same for the, my, my laptop. Uh, I bought a, a product here. My product was ID was number 20. I don't have the brand of my laptop, but if I wanna have, if I need to get the, the brand, I can go that I can reference to the table based on my product ID and get more information. Um, I put some color to make it easy uh, for, for explaining um, uh, the, next, uh, the next part of the presentation. Right? Basically for, for our document oriented database, we have uh, two uh, main ways to you know, like have data together. First one is to have embedded data, which is blue here. So if you see here, name Joe, I'm embedding data for my collection called uh, 
customer, right? So I have my collection called customer. And in this collection, uh, I'll have the ID and the name there. And then I have the product, sorry, the underscore ID for my customer. And if I need additional information, such as my um, customer birthday, I can go there, uh, perform an, an additional query only if needed, and then get an additional information about this specific customer. Right? And um, as well as for the products. But on the application side, and I'm considering, like I said, there's no right or wrong way. I'm just considering that that's all you need in order to show um, your, your customer or whoever needs to see the order. I'm supposing that uh, this is all you need. So instead of running um, a SQL command that is gonna join the orders with order details, with products and with customers, I can get all the data with a single query, right? And even, even better, if I wanna get all the orders that was created by anybody called Joe, I can do that in here, right? So I don't, I don't need to get any join or get any, any additional table. Um, of course, we can index, make it faster, but that's some, for a different talk. Um, but the idea is, how, is to show how you would like um, in a relational database, I'm sorry, in a document-oriented database comparing to a uh, relational database. For uh, this next slide, I'm just, um, I'm just uh, summarizing everything that I said. Um, although in like embedded, uh, or sometimes I'm gonna refer as nested documents, duplicate the data uh, will help with query performance, right? So one request, one response, all the information you need for that specific order. For embed documents, some, some advantages. It's, it's gonna point joins or look up, will simplify the query, will make it way more human readable, right? Opening um, the JSON will pretty much tell everything about um, your order. And you know, like avoiding going back and forth over the wire. Of course you can like run queries in parallel and everything, but in, in a very simple way, it can, it can improve your performance as well. And for references, considering that references are very much a join, right? Um, MongoDB offers uh, a command called lookup where you can look up another table. Um, there are some, some cons and pros as well. Some, some pros is that it's gonna avoid duplication. Let's say uh, you have a huge document that uh, it's gonna increase significantly the, the document that you're gonna um, embed the document. So it may better to just reference the document. Um, and of course, referencing will save document space. But at the same time, as cons, it's gonna create some complexity because it's, gonna be, not gonna be, it's not gonna be human readable and the data will be very likely normalized data and can be slower depending on the amount of data that you are reading um, because the document oriented database doesn't necessarily has the same um, join algorithms as a relational database where we have uh, in like a uh, marriage joins uh, and we have um, also look up joins so the, the relational database they, they have 40 years experience you know like uh, joining tables uh, combining uh, result sets and uh, document databases are getting better there are some document databases that can perform join very well it's not called join uh, but can be slower that's uh, that's something that I, I want to mention um, some things uh, to be uh, aware of um, when moving from a relational database or when developing another application, if you are embedding documents, such as adding members to an array, uh, try to avoid that. If, uh, mainly if, if, this, um, if this embedded document can grow unlimited. Let's say you are developing an application for 
kind of tracking cars, right? Uh, the car is going to be, the car will be sending their position every second or so. And if you are embedding this data in the car uh, document, uh, it's very likely that at the end of the day, your document will reach out the limits uh, in size, which is um, 16 megabytes for, for most of uh, the MongoDB-like databases. And uh, not only that, so if you don't get to the 16 megabytes, you can get to 15, right? And those large documents will, will lead to poor uh, query performance. We, the query will be, sorry, the performance will be affected because handling uh, JSON, uh, six, uh, 15 megabytes JSON in memory and sending this 16 memory over the wire to your application will be a little bit more time demanding than uh, very small documents. I mentioned that already, uh, avoid multiple referencing, otherwise it's gonna be uh, a relational database and we don't wanna have that in a document oriented database. Um, and like I said, uh, uh, document oriented database cannot perform joins uh, the same way as uh, relational databases can. So let's talk about querying database now, querying the document uh, databases. We saw earlier that relational database used uh, SQL, right? The SQL, uh, the SQL standard. But for the document database, each document database use its own query language. Uh, MongoDB use JavaScript, similar. Uh, Query language, which is a Mongo query language, MQL, and you can you can run um, simple, not simple, but advanced JavaScript uh, based on that. FairDB, DocumentDB, CosmosDB, Procon Server use the same um, the same uh, query model as MongoDB. ArangoDB, which is another document uh, oriented database, use SQL well, which is not the same as MongoDB and neither uh, a SQL. Right? It uses its own um, its own query language. Uh, Cassandra use. I'm going to just mention Cassandra, although uh, it's not really a document, but can become be, uh, behave like. Uh, it uses its own as well, based on uh, the the standard SQL. And uh, with that said. Um, I believe I showed you the main differences. This is one of the main differences, right? But uh, uh, this is the one that I most see people having difficulties. Um, I want to talk about when migrating to a document oriented databases. And uh, some of the reasons why people and companies decide, uh, people decide to migrate is to get a better performance, to be able to handle um, the database size. Sometimes, like with those new um, environments with several ter terabytes of data, maybe uh, better to move to um, a web-ready uh, database. And of course, nowadays, um, we cannot afford downtime and having a high availability, a software that was designed for high availability will, will be appreciated by the company. Uh, sometimes companies decide to go with a lax schema, which is create an e-commerce and a web application or any other uh, application that can take advantage of uh, like a, a relaxed schema. Scaling out, uh, very similar to what I said. So you don't need to increase your machine, you just need to add more nodes and then you're gonna get a, a, a improved performance. I'm not getting to replication, charting, all the other, uh, bells and whistles that are really um, document oriented database can offer, uh, but that's reasons as well. And sometimes people just wanna like replace um, their, their legacy environments. Um, some good things to know um, before migrating, if you decide to migrate, make sure that your workload will fit into what a document oriented database can offer. Right? Because not every not all of the application will behave or perform better 
going to a NoSQL database. And that's not only for our document databases, it's for all kinds of database. Make sure that you can take advantage of the features that a document-oriented database can offer. When migrating to a relational database, if you need to normalize the data, it may get quite complex and uh, quite time consuming. And if you are migrating from an existing or a legacy, or a legacy application, uh, please be aware that you're gonna need to rewrite, rewrite the, the whole um, data, the data layer because it doesn't use SQL. There are some third parties trying to you know, like translate, but in most of the cases, you're gonna need to rewrite at least part of the software along with reports. Make sure as well that when migrating, your application is not highly dependent on foreign keys, triggers, and start procedures because not all the document-oriented database offers that. Right. There are some ways uh, to mimic the, the, um, those, uh, those functions, but not all the database offers that as well. Um, but please be aware that document database share a lot of in common with relational database. So you are going to need to take care of a primary key and you're going to need to keep the same concept uh, same, uh, the same for secondary indexes. Um, most of the document-oriented database are ACID compliant. Um, database are NoSQL database and document-oriented database are secure. You can have roles, you can grant access to different collections, granular access, you can use TSL, SSL, and so on and so forth. You also need to keep um, the eye on, on the no relation database, meaning uh, you should monitor, you should create the caps, you know, like sometimes, uh, not sometimes, but as often as possible, check for poorly poor performing queries. You can you you, you can use uh, almost everything that you learn with relational databases in a NoSQL databases uh, for that, right? Maintenance and, and so on. Um, as good practices when migrating or when developing uh, uh, an application that use document-oriented databases, keep the document as simple as possible, as consistent as possible, and make it human readable. Uh, your developers will, will thank you for that, right? And the developers that is going to maintain this software will thank you for that as well. Organize the tables or collections per subject. Avoid joins as much as you can because, like, like I mentioned, referencing can be expensive. Duplicating data is okay. Duplicating the entire data is not okay, right? Make sure that you are using embedded documents wisely. Uh, disk is cheap now, but feeding the disk with three times the same data is not that, uh, um, they're not a good, it's not a good use for your money, right? And document database needs attention for indexes and uh, for all the other operations that you perform in a normal database. Even if it's a service, you need to keep the eyes on query performance because it's, it's the same, the same idea with the query optimizer. Um, you like running queries and finding the best and the easiest path for uh, getting your data. Some common mistakes um, on most of the top of the, the time. Uh, Document-oriented database and relational database are not enemies. It's okay, it's common to see companies using uh, NoSQL and SQL together in the same application, getting the best for both um, in, in the same application. So you don't need to hate one to like the other, right? Uh, it's totally okay to have more than one database um, in an application, right? Uh, do not try to simply import your relational data in a document-oriented database. It's not gonna work. It's gonna behave very likely worse, worse than uh, the relational database because the relational database, uh, the, the document database was not made for that. Not enforcing any schema pattern um, may make, uh, I'll change this rule for may make the retrieval complex because if you don't know what you are looking for, you don't know how to query for. Right? 
So like, if you have a collection of all products, keep the name consistent, keep the price consistent, right? Other properties, that's fine. But if you need to look for, I know the product, product ID, uh, keep the product ID in, like, in all the, the, the documents, and then you can index for that and query for that as well. And make sure when you're choosing your NoSQL, being Mongo, Cosmos, even those database, they have some differences in their language, some functions. Um, choose your NoSQL, but be aware that your application will be basically based on the SQL language of your NoSQL at that time. And uh, with that, I'm finishing the presentation. I hope you like it that. I'm open for questions. And uh, yeah, feel free to ask me questions. Thank you. Adamo, thank you so much for uh, delivering the talk today. We actually have a couple of questions for you. So uh, we would appreciate if uh, uh, you would answer these. Um, <clears throat> so Lenny asks, you touched this question in general, uh, but I'm wondering what are the types of workloads which would generally perform better in document database, databases versus relational? You're on mute. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it, it really depends, right? So um, let's say when you have, um, data commerce is a very practical example, right? So you don't need to create dynamic uh, tables and getting data from there. Some simple workload that I've seen um, quite often as well, you know, like a, a vehicle, uh, tracking tracking cars, any any kind of uh, you know like a track system. Because usually uh, we also have some geo libraries there. Uh, but in a, in a in a summary, if you design your system. Uh, in the right way, if you can use, if you can take advantage of embedded, uh, embedded documents, you can have in you know, like a better performance in mostly of the workloads. I'm gonna say that for an enterprise resourcing plan, you're gonna get any advantage of having uh, NoSQL uh, database running as your main database because you need a highly, you know, like a dependence. You have a high depend a dependency between the tables among the tables. So. If you don't have this kind of, uh, like, if you don't need this kind of dependency and um, you can design your document, you're going to get a better performance in, in NoSQL. But again, uh, NoSQL is not a, a silver bullet, right? So if you're trying to query one terabyte of data in a small box of running, uh, NoSQL is not going to work, right? So you may, it may get more expensive. Uh, to run comparing to a uh, relational as well. So you need to consider cost complexity before saying that one is faster than another. Not sure if it answers the question, but that's... Uh... I think it did. Uh, at least we don't have uh, feedback from many yet. Um, <clears throat> the next, next question uh, from Dot. Um, um, they ask if someone moves from relational to document databases, is there a possibility to still use SQL uh, to query uh, the database from business intelligence applications? There are some tools out there trying to translate. I'm saying trying because sometimes you can face some like unexpected issue. Um, but right now for the one that I know is uh, MongoDB, has one for the BI, right? And uh, there's another one that I don't recall the name. Please, uh, I can I can give details. It's it's a it's a pay tool that is gonna map your no relational database and create kind of a schema for you where you can query uh, very likely uh, a standard SQL, right? I don't recall the tool right now, but I can I can I can try to find uh, in a couple seconds. <laughs> well, shameless plug here. Um... Even though uh, the question was not directed to me, I know at least one database, FaradDB, because FaradDB is running on Postgres as the database engine, so uh, it can still be queried uh, with, uh, with, uh, with SQL. In okay. the second layer, uh, right? yeah. 
Yeah. They start later. Well, you can well, collect directly. It, it, yeah. You have to you have to plan accordingly as a developer, of yes. course, to 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 still. Uh, but yeah, it works great. Yeah, things. so you don't need to translate the data is there. Okay, and the last question I'm seeing here um, uh, from uh, Josh. You mentioned that data duplication is okay because this is cheap, which is still a scary concept to me. What would be an acceptable level of duplicated data in the database? Um, like I mentioned, yeah, we are not duplicating everything, right? Uh, I would say like 10% is fine. Getting about 20%, it's kind of fine as well. We have a lot of, uh, you know, like a, a lot of a compressing algorithm. So if the data is the same, we're gonna have this compressed as well. It's not gonna you know, like use a lot of disk. But if you go beyond 30%, dupli 30 uh, I would say like, look at your uh, documents, perhaps you can you take advantage of uh, you know, like a referencing, uh, reference data. When I say you know, like duplicating data, I'm, I'm basically saying like, I'm, I'm just saying, like if you're always looking, let me go back here to my presentation. If you're always looking for your customer name, like just save the customer name and then you can reference everything else, right? So I'm just referring to some stuff. If you're in a relational database, you're gonna save the product order as a snapshot of that time. So you're like in a relational database, you're gonna end up duplicating your data as well, right? So don't duplicate everything. Uh, you know, like don't make it like three, four times uh, the same. Don't put the entire customer here, right? Uh, when I say duplicating data is you know, like, it's okay. I'm mentioning duplicating part of the document should be fine. Duplicating the whole document here, like the whole customer here, um, will not be the you know, like the best thing to do with a document database. Just just make it as easy as possible with the less amount of data possible for anybody to understand you know, like what you are trying to uh, get with a single query. That's that's my uh, you know, like explanation for duplicating data. Uh, it's cheap, but I know that's not that cheap. Again, if you have Joe duplicated, uh, Joe here happening like 1 million times, compaction will take care of that as well. So you're not gonna uh, really like save that 1 million times. And yeah, yeah. questions? I see. Thank you so much, uh, Adamo. I don't think we have uh, more questions, but we really appreciate that uh, you took the time to deliver this uh, talk. Of course, this is going to be available uh, on uh, YouTube as a, as a recording. So anyone is uh, free to uh, watch it later. So Adamo, again, thank you very much for coming. Uh, and as for the rest of uh, the series, uh, we will have uh, our next webinar on the 19th of, um, of April. Um, uh, the, uh, the webinar will be about comparing Cosmos DB, Document DB, and Ferret DB as a document database in Fourier Stack. Uh, the speaker will be David Murphy, um, uh, who works at Udemy. So uh, we are hoping that uh, you will all join us uh, for our next uh, events. Please visit uh, documentdatabase.org for the full uh, calendar. And also, uh, we are accepting proposals and ideas for talks or events in the document database community. Uh, anyone is welcome, no matter uh, where uh, they work, no matter um, what kind of document uh, database they are working with. Uh, whether it's open source or proprietary, it doesn't really matter. We are here to bring uh, um, we are here to uh, bring uh, everyone under one community where we can discuss document uh, databases. Uh, so uh, also uh, make sure uh, you consider uh, joining our Slack uh, community as well as we have that and more info on that can be found on the website again. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great uh, day ahead and see you on our next uh, events. Take care. Bye-bye.